Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of System Level Design. I'm here with Narendra Kanda from NVIDIA, Jack Greenbaum from Green Hill Software, Frank Schurmeister from Cadence, Kurt Schuler from Arteris, and Shapte Madelon from Mentorgraph. So from your perspective, what's the biggest problem in hardware, software, or code development these days, or problems? The biggest problem that I see is integrating a complex piece of hardware with a complex piece of software. You know, that's the solution that silicon companies, semiconductor companies are expected to provide today. It's a complete solution that comprises a, a, a complex pieces of hardware and software. So realizing, realizing silicon very early in the design cycle to make both the software development and the hardware development go hand in hand to deliver this complete solution is an absolute necessity. So to realize this, you know, you know, a model of the design very early in the design cycle, the challenge is creating readily available models for all the pieces in the design. And the models could either be in C, it could be in RTL, or they could some some parts of the design could be realized in uh, hardware FPGA prototyping or emulation and so on. So that oh, is a challenge. Are we making progress in in today's uh, environment? You know, when I look at the existing solutions, you know, in the industry that's provided by the EDA vendors, I see that there is no complete solution. I see signs of some solutions develop, developing, and uh, we encourage, uh, you know, wholeheartedly, and we uh, we urge the EDA companies to invest in this uh, area and get solutions, you know, out that the semiconductor companies can use. Frank, from your perspective, what's the biggest problem in hardware, software, code development these days? Well, there are really two perspectives here. As we are moving up towards higher levels of abstraction, becoming independent of hardware and software implementation with making the decisions, things need to, things need to, be, um, uh, things need to also be integrated later on in the flow more automatically. So while we are going out to much more complexity, much higher complexity with lots of blocks to be designed and co-designed, we also need to automate the implementation later on once we have the individual pieces. And then the other perspective is how do you actually simulate all this and how do you execute all this? And that's where the combination of the different engines like RTL simulation, FPGA prototyping, emulation, and then layered on top of that the TLM um, components come in to be able to have a true mix and match development uh, type of environment in which you can uh, make and validate the decisions about your design. Are we making progress? Uh, we're definitely making progress. Uh, the ultimate uh, confirming goal will be once we have models generated as a natural byproduct of the design flow, a interconnect provider like Arteris creating models automatically as part of the creation of the interconnect and the same for processors and peripherals. Once we are there, uh, we know that uh, we have made enough progress that we can worry about the next problems. So Shapte, from your perspective, what's the biggest, what are the biggest problems in software, hardware, or code development these days? I would say that uh, there are several challenges uh, specifically from a model development perspective. Uh, availability of models, availability of models that contain not only accurate information about the functionality, but also a model that contains power and performance information. Uh, that's one of the challenges. Another barrier might be actually the end users that need to uh, collaborate uh, with each other. Uh, some of the verification, the verification teams, hardware designers, software designers, and architects needs, need to collaborate together. Uh, I think that there is a lot of progress from a technology perspective in automation of model creation. For example, creating approximately time models from a definition 
uh, providing tools that allows you to assemble the platform together, providing analysis capabilities, simulation capabilities. There are a lot of enabling technologies that are coming together and more awareness about IP providers providing those models. But uh, getting the models across the entire platform and getting teams to actually work together and derive the implementation from a common virtual prototype is still, I think, the highest barrier to adoption. Are we making progress? I think we are making a significant progress. Uh, a major enabler was the establishment of the TLM 2.0 standard because, uh, be, because it enables basically interoperability among models that, uh, that users, IP providers, uh, semiconductor houses uh, uh, create. Uh, we are also seeing uh, a huge progress just because of the sheer complexity of the problem. Now with multi-cores uh, and the use of multi-cores and specialized cores with uh, more standardized cores together in conjunction with hardware that is optimized for performance and power, uh, these are creating compelling events for using uh, virtual prototypes, uh, using architectural exploration prototypes, actually using a combination of the two. And uh, we are seeing very big growth, even though in absolute numbers the industry is still relatively small uh, to where it could, uh, could have been um, given some of the barriers uh, primarily among users. Kurt, what do you see as the biggest problem in hardware software code development? The, the problems that I see from the perspective of an IP vendor in hardware software co-development are um, the f first thing is uh, the availability of all the different models of the complete SOC. Uh, because we make the interconnect, we have to be able to, uh, for an SOC simulation, you need to be able to take the interconnect and connect it to models of all the, you know, all the different IP blocks. Uh, sometimes those are available when they should be, sometimes they're not. And I think that's a function of an IP vendor saying, hey, I don't just deliver RTL, and I don't just deliver a verification test suite, but I also deliver you know, models at the required levels of abstraction so that my customers can actually do uh, uh, co-design uh, prior to actually you know, creating the chip. Uh, the second thing is there are multiple different uh, cockpits. You, know, you, call it, you call it ESL or System C cockpits. Um, and some of the, the major companies will uh, maintain their own proprietary cockpit, even though there's great commercial solutions out there. And the problem is, is that as an IP vendor, you have to support all these different, uh, all these different cockpits, all these different uh, development environments. And it becomes very uh, complicated and cost prohibitive. So over time, I think uh, a lot of these larger semiconductor vendors will uh, get rid of their own proprietary kind of system C um, uh, infrastructures in favor of uh, you know better and more easily maintainable commercial tools but it's it's taking some time to do that and then uh, the final thing that I see is the issue is still that separation between hardware developers and software developers and you know it's kind of like the, the the reds and the blues uh, within you know sometimes we talk about in politics it's the same kind of thing they're very different people and uh, it's very rare that you see at a project kickoff within a semiconductor vendor that you see architects, the hardware developers, and the software developers in the same room together. And until we start doing that, I think uh, it, it's going to be a, a while before we have optimized development process both hardware and software in parallel. Jack, from your perspective, what's the biggest problem with software and hardware code design? The biggest problem is getting a model that is useful enough, complete enough to run real workloads so that you can see what you want to see from the model. Uh, see where your performance might need to get partitioned into hardware. See where your power might need to change by using more hardware blocks, different software blocks, a different CPU. So getting that model and getting it economically, both in terms of time and dollars, so that you can make the decisions that you'd like to make. Are we making any progress along that front at this point? Are you starting to see it? I, I think we are making progress. Uh, you know, seeing the proliferation of, of uh, development platforms for cell phone applications. Those are system level models. So I think that we're making progress in terms of uh, uh, people seeing a value in having a system level model, but having them widely proliferated, 
Um, I'm still seeing too many chips that are broken at the back end and people wanting us to fix it in software when the decisions were already made years ago.